you know, even if the Shivalingam in, in the past was, you know, spirited away by some local devotees, thrown in a well in order that the Muslim soldiers would not find it. Debate between Taslim al Rahmani and Nupur Sharma. That was also about the Gyan Muslims. Because seven people who have supported Nupur Sharma, only with some tweet, you know, nothing important, just words, you know, have been killed for it. And it was propagated, you know, it was enjoined by some influencer, Mohammed Zubair, who recently received an award for interreligious dialogue. See, see how you can get that award, you know, just, just Sartan Se Judah, and, you know. As far as I'm concerned, India can be a secular state, only it should gradually, now, after 77 years, become a secular state because it isn't one at the moment. And so this is something to do for a new government. There are a number of discriminations in the constitution and in the laws and in political practice that have to be straightened out. In this case, the history is fairly well known. So several times it has been destroyed by Islamic iconoclasm. The last time under Aurangzeb, and then you had a sort of compromise rebuilding under Ailia by Holkar. You know, the, the end of the Mughal period was this, you know, uneasy equilibrium with some remaining Mughal power that was being respected both by the British and the Marathas, where you had all these compromise arrangements. So, in this case, uh, it meant that the Golden Temple came up just beside the Gyanwapping Mosque. And, you know, some people would say, well, yeah, that's good enough. Here, you know, it depends on what the importance of the site itself is. Now, in the case of the birthplace of Rama or Krishna, that's obvious, you know, you can't move a birthplace. And this is where it happened. Now, in the case of the Gyanwapi Mosque, what exactly happened? And so, apparently, you know, Shiva came down somehow, but you know, that's not the same thing as birth. I mean, there is, you have a human event that is necessarily confined in space and time. Here, you have some symbolic events, and I guess that that place is fixed. But you know, here as an outsider, as a skeptic, you could doubt, you know, but has anything really happened there? You know, does it really have to be this side? Are you sure that a few meters away, because it's not more than that, you know, that golden temple will actually do? I mean, since Hindus insist on that place, since Aurangs have insisted on that place, but negatively, I suppose that, you know, what we're going for is that specific place. From then on, you know, you just have the history. Okay, there was a Hindu temple there, then a Muslim temple came into place, and therefore, logically, you know, once Muslim rule is over, then we should rebuild the Hindu. The Hindu. Again, you see, I see this as a compromise. Of course, there are many Hindu temples that could be replaced or, I mean, reclaimed. But, you know, if we have these three, that will essentially do. So in that case, I'm in favor of the return of that site. I've thought about the history of the site, going back to some, some king within the solar dynasty who lived there. But you see, in the case of Hindu civilization, I always emphasize this point. Yeah, but the Rishis didn't know this. There was no Ram at the time of Vasishta. I mean, the real Vasishta, not his descendant who was the personal guru of Rama. I mean, there was no Rama in the case of King Bharata, let's say that. So. You can be a Hindu without Rama. If you can be a Hindu without Shiva, that is less certain. <laughs> Shiva is eternal. And so, effectively, the Shiva Lingam, for example, that goes back to Harappan days, and we don't know how much farther back. These archaeological findings can, of course, add a lot more detail, but they can't really change the narrative anymore because the narrative is just too well known, it's too obvious. And indeed, for what much meanwhile through the media I've heard about these excavations, you know, they do confirm the narrative. So, you know, it was a shy of a place, that's quite obvious. Debate between Taslim al-Rahmani and Nupur Sharma, that was also about the Gyanwapi Mosque, remember? 
So they had discovered something that looked like a Shiva Lingam. And so there was a debate about whether this really was a Shiva Lingam. Now, as long as I haven't seen it myself, I will not speak out about this. Maybe you see, suppose, you know, what they found was some unimportant object and not a Shiva Lingam. That makes no difference to the ultimate history of the site. You know, even if the Shiva Lingam in, in the past was, you know, spirited away by some local devotees, thrown in a well in order that the Muslim soldiers would not find it. Yeah, that's fine, but you know, if that object had disappeared somehow, well, then still the history would be the same, even if we have less evidence for it. And again, the history is well known. Now about the Shiva Lingam, there you see, the question was whether this thing was a Shiva Lingam, that's what this new Sharma argued, but Taslim Rahmani essentially changed the subject by focusing on, well, the, you know, funny nature of the Shiva Lingam symbol to any outsider. You know, they say, well, it's, you know, it's the, uh, the thing of uh, Shiva. And then, you know, that easily lends itself to making all kinds of jokes, which in fact is not uncommon among Hindus themselves. You know, they are not always in a worshipful mood. And so, you know, Hindus too don't hesitate to make fun of their gods on occasion. So in this case as well, in order, you know, to that extent I can perfectly understand uh, Taslim Rehmani. However, when he uh, attacked Shiva like this, then Nupur Sharma felt motivated to go against that by claiming, well, if you want to make fun of our gods, so can we. And then she started quoting from the Hadith, the traditions about the Prophet. And she very, very truthfully, at least truthful according to Muslim tradition, reminded us all that Muhammad had had uh, marriage with a six-year-old girl when he was 53. So, I mean, that was true. And that, of course, was suddenly unacceptable, not only to Taslim Rehmani, also to the general Muslim community and even to the BJP, because she was thrown out of the party. She was not only sacked as a spokesman, I mean, an employer can sack an employee, but also thrown out of the party because the party didn't want to be associated with criticism of Islam, even if totally truthful according to Muslims themselves. I mean, there are videos by uh, Zaki Nayak where he tries to rationalize this particular marriage between Muhammad and Aisha. And so it's not as if Muslims don't know this. It's only that they don't want Hindus to know it. But you see here, I repeat, you know, that of course I support Nupur Sharma. I know that that's risky because seven people who have supported Nupur Sharma only with some tweet, you know, nothing important. Just words, you know, I have been killed for it. Remember, um, Gustav Hirasul ki eki saza sartan si juda. So for the insult of the Prophet, there is only one punishment, severing the head from the trunk. So that was effectively done. And it was propagated, you know, it was enjoined by some influencer, Mohammed Zubair, who recently received an award for interreligious dialogue. See, see how you can get that award, you know, just, just Sartan Se Juda and, you know. Anyway, so that's, you know, that's an episode of the whole Gyan Wapi saga that we should also take into account. And just like with Ayodhya, you not only have the proper struggle on the street as well as in the courts. You also have episodes like uh, the Godra, the Godra pogrom, 59 Hindus killed because they came from Ayodhya. So that's, that's part of the story, but okay, that's not the only part of the story. Let's not forget that part, but let's not get too much fixated on it either. How are the judges going to deal with the Places of Worship Act? Because it, it is it is already coming apart. You know, there are minor court cases about minor temples that also go against the prohibition on tampering with the status of sacred sites. Like uh, there is one site in Salem in Tamil Nadu where the judge has prohibited Hindus from continuing to worship a particular uh, murti, which according to some local Ambedkarites is in fact the Buddha. And indeed, this is quite possible. And so the story is that the villagers 
have discovered in the ground some pieces of a murti and then they pasted the pieces together so that it looked like a proper murti again. It has some signs of the Buddha like these long earlobes. Uh, there are a number of physical signs that supposedly indicate the Buddha. So then they did what Hindus normally do. When they find something sacred, they start worshipping it. And so in this case they built a mandir around this statue and the worship of the statue continued. And I think that's beautiful. But, you know, the anti-Hindu party sees it differently. So they say, no, 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 this is the Buddha. And, you know, it has to be the Buddha. And only if it is the Buddha can it be worshipped. And these ugly vicious Hindus, they can't worship it. And that's what the judge agreed to. So, you see, there are a number of interesting aspects in this affair. But for the Places of Worship Act, the interesting thing is that it goes flatly against the, the mandate of the cases of worship act. It does change the status of something religious. So, you know, just merely to say that the places of worship act is hard to maintain. And so in an important case like this one, it will be interesting to see if some judge will dare to maintain the law. Thank you.